What's going on guys? My name is Wade with Tech Daily, and in this video, we've got a two for one unboxing. We're gonna be checking out both the new Google Pixel 7 Pro and the Pixel Watch. Now, the kind folks over at Team Pixel sent me over quite the special package here, and thanks so much to them for doing so and for getting these devices to me a couple of days early. I'll show you the retail boxes as well in just a second, but let's just dive right into this big old box. So inside this awesome presentation case, we have the new Pixel 7 Pro in the snow colorway. And that bright white finish with the silver accents really looks good. Next to it, of course, is the all new Pixel Watch. And I'll definitely set this up and try it on right away so you can see it in action. Now, if you're curious what all comes inside the regular Pixel packaging when you buy one of these, it's pretty much the standard stuff. For the Pixel 7 Pro, we once again just get a USB-C cable for charging, USB-A to USB-C adapter for data transfer, and a small little instructional booklet. No other chargers, cases, or accessories are included. With the new Pixel Watch. Inside the packaging here, you'll find a unique sort of proprietary charging puck that magnetically attaches to the back of the Pixel Watch and charges via USB-C, and a secondary smaller band for the watch that you can swap out if the large size band that's already installed is too big for you. Besides that, you also get a stack of paperwork and instructions if you need it, but fortunately, setting up the phone and the watch and everything is super simple. So here are the new Pixel devices once again, and first off, I want to just show you how to set up and use the new Pixel watch. I'm gonna have a dedicated review video and a lot more content on this thing, so stay tuned for that. But out of the box, all you have to do really is just hold the watch near your phone and the watch pops right up for pairing. You'll have to install the Pixel Watch app from the Google Play Store, and once that's done, the app walks you through a couple of pages of setup instructions and gets everything connected automatically. You'll also want to install the Fitbit app. Google has partnered with Fitbit on this watch, and there's a whole bunch of Fitbit-specific integrations that you can take advantage of. There's plenty more apps and things you could, of course, utilize with this watch, but that's it as far as setup goes. It took me all of like three minutes and now the watch is ready to use. Now the watch itself is sleek and slim and small-ish. It's a 41 millimeter watch. I kind of have small wrists, so I actually think it looks pretty good on me. And the band is that soft premium rubbery silicone that looks nice and feels great. Just swiping through the menus here and playing around with the buttons, the watch is very responsive. The user interface is pretty straightforward. It's honestly been a while since I've used any smartwatch at all. So I'm excited to get back into it with this one since it's really a brand new product from the ground up from Google. Like I said, I'll definitely have some dedicated Pixel Watch videos coming here soon, so look out for those. As far as the phone, the new Pixel 7 Pro is very much a refinement of last year's Pixel 6 Pro, but there's plenty of things that have changed and been upgraded here that are worth getting excited about. Physically, the new 7 Pro is once again a 6.7 inch device, that's the screen size, corner to corner, and we have the same center hole punch selfie camera and and minimal bezels all around like last year. The screen to body ratio comes in at just shy of 89%, so most of what you're looking at is all screen. And in the hand, while it's a larger device in general, it's fairly comfortable, and the actual size and form factor is very similar to last year. One interesting physical change though is the less significant curve on the screen along the edges. Last year, the Pixel 6 Pro had almost a waterfall display, you could say. This year, it's far less extreme, though still slightly curvy. It's enough, in my opinion, to make the phone look premium and feel slim and thin in the hand without being so extreme that it affects the touch area. So this to me is a pretty good change. Around back, the rear housing of the Pixel 7 Pro has also been refreshed a bit. That iconic camera bar is still here just with a new design and the back cover is premium Gorilla Glass Victus paired with a polished all aluminum frame. The other colors this year are obsidian black and hazel green, but to me this snow white and aluminum finish looks super clean. And taking a quick look around at everything else, on the left side, the new Pixel 7 Pro still has its SIM card tray. Though no SD card slot or expandable storage, you get 128, 256, or 512 gig configuration options. On the right, volume and power buttons that have actually been moved down a little bit on the side. Nothing really up top aside from a microphone hole and 5G antenna cover. At the bottom, the USB-C port is surrounded by a speaker and additional microphone. No headphone jack here, unfortunately. There's a secondary speaker in the earpiece up front, and around back, of course, that funky camera set up, which I'll talk more about in just a second. Underneath the display, Google once again offers an in-display fingerprint sensor, and I'm happy to say that this setup is way better than the Pixels of last year. It's quick, it's consistent, it's exactly the kind of change these Pixel phones needed with the fingerprint sensor, and I'm really excited Google made it better. By comparison, here's the fingerprint sensor on the Pixel 6a, and yeah, you can see it definitely is a bit slower. So the fingerprint sensor on the Pixel 7 Pro seems perfect now, and I'm really happy about that. Also, Google added face unlock 
unlock to the pixels this year. So you have one more unlocking option and this too seems quite fast and accurate. Both unlocking methods are great and as weird as it sounds, I'm sort of glad Google focused a lot of attention on that for this phone. It's something we use a million times a day anyway, so it really should be as good as it can be. When it comes to the display, the 6.7 inch screen is a similar spec to last year, but there are a couple of improvements. The Pixel 7 Pro's display is once again an LTPO AMOLED panel coming in at a resolution of 3120 by 1440 for around 512 pixels per inch. And it's a 120 hertz adaptive display with HDR10 plus support. All those core specs are the same. To get the highest resolution possible, you'll wanna go into settings and switch the resolution. And of course, make sure that 120 hertz mode is enabled to get the silky smooth and ultra responsive feel that really makes this phone awesome to use. And as far as the viewing experience, this is really as good as it gets. The Pixel 7 Pro is bold and colorful and bright, brighter in fact than last year. That's the main upgrade, up to 1500 nits outside in direct sunlight. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing how it handles the bright Las Vegas sun. And honestly, with everything else staying the same, a much brighter display, especially for those glary situations, is enough of an upgrade for me. The screen as a whole is one of the top reasons, in my opinion, to consider the Pixel 7 Pro, and I don't think you can ask for anything better. For the out loud listening experience, we once again have a dual speaker setup, one down at the bottom and the secondary one sort of hidden at the top in the earpiece. I don't believe anything has changed here. Everything sounds really good. And here's a quick sample so you can hear it for yourself. Inside, Google's flagship Pixel device is once again powered by their own new Tensor chipset platform, this time the Tensor G2. Now the processor alone isn't a huge upgrade over last year, but paired now with a Mali G710 GPU, Google says this new Pixel 7 Pro should be faster with things like speech tasks and image processing. Along with that, the Tensor G2, Google says, should be less power hungry, in turn affording potentially better battery life during the day. And here are the Geekbench scores for those of you who like to compare. But honestly, I don't put too much weight into that simply because this is Google's own smartphone paired with Google's own processor and Google's own well-optimized OS. With all of that stuff working in harmony, this is no doubt one of the fastest and smoothest Android experiences you can get. And especially if you're engulfed in Google's little ecosystem, I don't know that you'll get a better setup. Year over year, it's the OS and Google-centric features that I think draw people to Pixel devices. And this is once again a phone that's not just powerful, but has plenty of Pixel perks that make it a great device. Couple that with years of guaranteed updates and the chance to be first in line for major Android releases, and you really have the top tier Android experience. For me, this is why I'll prefer a Pixel over most other Android devices, and I have no doubt that the performance and user experience is what keeps Pixel fans coming back for more. When it comes to the battery, nothing's really changed size-wise compared to last year. This phone packs in a fairly large 5,000 milliamp battery again, 30 watt wired fast charging, 23 watt wireless charging, reverse wireless charging. The difference I'm curious about is longevity with average day-to-day -day usage. Will the Tensor G2 chipset really allow for better battery life? Is Android 13 better optimized? We'll have to wait and see as I start to use this phone in the coming days. I'm definitely gonna put this phone to the test because I'm curious curious myself to see if there's really any noticeable difference in longevity. Finally, in regards to the camera setup, Google once again has focused a lot of their time and attention on delivering a better shooting experience in more ways than one. And this year, the bulk of those improvements will be seen with the actual picture and video results. So hardware-wise, not a whole lot has changed. The main rear lens seems to be the same 50 megapixel shooter, paired now with a new 48 megapixel 120 millimeter telephoto lens with up to five times optical zoom and a similar but slightly wider wide angle lens. 12 megapixels again, but 126 degrees versus 114 on last year's phone. The selfie camera up front seems to have changed a little bit as well. It's now a 10.8 megapixel lens, but all these specs don't really tell the whole tale. Inside the camera app, Google has added a few new modes and features that really let you get even more out of the cameras, including cinematic blur to change the bokeh effect in pictures, macro focus,
focus for better up-close shots, photo unblur, which transforms blurry faces if you happen to mess up a shot, as well as now up to 30 times zoom. To me, those camera add-ons, along with everything else that Google has been offering, will be super useful. And with some real-world picture samples here, I can also tell already that this new Pixel 7 Pro takes image processing up a notch as well. Taking pictures is faster for sure, and I'm confident in saying that this phone will likely be the best of the best when it comes to pictures at least, and I'm excited to put it up against the iPhone 14 Pro and some other devices to really see how it compares. These couple of test shots though really look good, both with the selfie camera and the rear lens setup, and I can't wait to see what this phone can do in the real world. I'm absolutely going to have some camera comparison videos coming soon with this phone, so look out for those if you're interested. All in all, with the Pixel Watch, this is of course a brand new device, and for Google Power users who wanted a smartwatch or a fitness tracker, I think this is definitely going to fill that need. It might even bring me back into the smartwatch game, and I'm interested to see how I end up using it in my day-to-day -day routine. With the Pixel 7 Pro, it's certainly an iterative update over last year, but I still think there's plenty to get excited about. What do you guys think about these new Pixel devices? Will you be picking either of them up? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts, of course. Hopefully you guys did enjoy this video, though. Be sure to follow Tech Daily on Twitter and subscribe to the Tech Daily YouTube channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys later.